Does the thought of improvising a melody on the spot absolutely terrify you? Well, you are not alone. But today I'm going to show you why the skill is so important and how it can really benefit your musical journey. Hi everyone, my name is Tatiana and this is The Flute Practice, a fun, supportive and highly effective way to learn the flute right here on the internet. There is a joke in classical music about improvising that goes something like this. How do you get a classical musician to stop playing? Take away their music and tell them to improvise. Not the best joke out there, I know. But there is some real truth to this because as a classical musician, we were never really taught how to improvise. And this is particularly crazy considering that improvisation was such an important part of Western classical culture. In the Baroque traditions, for example, it was expected of performers to be able to improvise and ornament entire melodies to the point that sometimes those melodies didn't sound anything like the original melody. Mozart himself impressed the Empress Maria Theresia when he was only six years old by improvising an entire piece of music based off a little theme that she had given him. Yet somewhere along the way we have lost the art of improvising and I think it's time for us to find it again. Okay, before we get into the benefits of this amazing skill, I just want to take a moment to go over the basics and answer the question that some of you may have, which is, what on earth is improvising? Well, the short answer is it's basically just the art of kind of making up a melody or embellishing an existing melody on the go, in the moment. Jazz and folk musicians do this all the time. But there are actually loads of different styles of improvisation and many, many, many different approaches. And we're not going to get into the specifics of that today, except to say it doesn't really matter what style and what approach you use here. The important thing is that you do some kind of improvising. And at the end of this video, I'm going to guide you to some resources that will help you get started on your improvising journey as well. OK, let's dive into some of the amazing benefits. The first really amazing benefit is that it really helps you to understand and value your scales. In fact, one of the easiest ways to learn how to improvise is just to use a simple scale. So you take a scale and you just play or make up a melody using only the notes of that scale. So for example, if I do that in G major, To be able to do this you really need to know your scales and really understand those scales and not just be able to play them off a piece of music but actually have them in your head memorized and in improvising we start to really see the value of scales and why they are so important because they become the glue that hold everything together and they do this not just for improvisation but actually for all music it also starts to change the way that you look at music on the whole and this has some amazing knock-on benefits that we are going to get to in a moment. Another really powerful benefit of improvising is that it helps to develop your ear or your oral skills. And this is probably hands down one of the most powerful benefits of improvisation. And it does this in many ways. It helps you to be able to hear harmonies better. It actually improves your sense of rhythm and counting and all of that. But the big way that it really helps is that it allows you to start being able to hear a melody or notes in your head and then play them on your instrument. And that's strengthening this amazing ear to finger connection, which is so important in music making. When I first started improvising really badly, I'll tell you, I could not do this. I could not just hear a melody in my head and play it. I just kind of went with whatever came out of my instrument. But over time, I found that I was starting to be able to actually sing a melody in my head and let it come out on my instrument pretty intuitively. And this is a truly exciting thing to learn because it has some other benefits for the rest of your playing. In fact, it's this skill that led to the next benefit for me, which was it helped me to memorize things better and more easily. Because here's what happens is if you can hear a tune in your head and then play it on your instrument, you can also memorize a tune in your head and then play it on your instrument. And actually memorizing a tune is much easier than memorizing actual physical notes. That's right. It turns out our ears are powerful memorizers. But add to this, if you've learned how to improvise well, it means that when you do have little memory slips in concerts, 
you'll be able to improvise your way out of it. And this leads me to the next point, which is it actually helps you to perform more confidently. I'm going to demonstrate this point with a little story. I was playing common fantasy with an orchestra. I'm going to show you guys a picture of me playing that actual common fantasy with the orchestra right now. There were several concerts across the country and I was playing it from memory. And while some concerts went very well, others did not go quite as planned. I remember one particular performance I was playing towards the end. There's like all these little image scale sections and I lost focus for just a moment and I had a memory slip. I forgot where I was or my fingers just couldn't quite find the thread again. And because I had been doing so much improv, I just improvised my way out of it. And I just played some scales and, you know, things that could have been written in the music, to be very honest with you. And I can tell you that almost nobody noticed. The conductor certainly noticed and probably the flute players in the orchestra would have noticed. But actually, I managed to keep going and improvise my way out of that situation pretty easily. Additionally, improvising teaches you that there are no real mistakes. Like, you don't really have mistakes in improv. It, things sound weird and funky at times, but you kind of work your way around them, work your way out of them. And this also adds a level of confidence because when you're in a concert, you realize that no matter what mistakes come and they will come, you can and will problem solve and improvise your way out of those mistakes again. Improvisation also improves your sight reading. And there are two big reasons for this. The first reason is the fact that you are able to hear the music that you see on the page more easily because you've been working on those lovely oral skills. But there's another component, which is what happens is your brain will start to read music and because it's so used to improvising, it'll start to fill in the notes rather than try to read each individual note. It'll get pretty comfortable with not necessarily playing exactly what's on that page, but keeping going. And you will be amazed how often that guessing what's on that page is fairly accurate, actually. This helps keep the number one rule of sight reading intact, which is to never, ever stop. The last really big benefit to improvising is that it gives us a heightened sense of freedom and creativity in our playing. It helps us to just create music in the moment and unleash our inner musician. And even if this feels like a really daunting thing for you to do at the time, I promise you that when you get into this, you are going to start to enjoy it more and more and have a much more fulfilling sense of creating music. Improvising not only helps you develop your musician skills, build confidence and become a more adaptable and versatile player, but it also helps to really unlock your musical voice. Plus, it can actually be so, so, so much fun. And if you want to get into improvising and have some fun with this, then I'm going to recommend go ahead and watch this video right here that's going to give you some wonderful ideas to get started on your improv journey. Happy practicing as always. I hope happy improvising and I'll see you guys next time.